probably a bit late for me to have any youthful moments of discovery. Now he's fishing. Don't think there's an age limit on those, to be honest. They're flirting. You flirt, mummy. Fishing and flirting. Maybe. No messing around, more Heartstopper. This is episode six from season two. I love this show so much. I'm already sad there's only a couple more episodes before the end. Ready? Let's crack on. Espère tomber le rugby. Les filles adorent les joueurs de rugby. <laughs> Something about rugby? David avait plein de petites copines quand il avait ton âge. It was good to meet you, Charlie. You should have paid more attention in French at school. Wonderful to meet one of Nick's friends. Yeah, you too. Oh, on s'appelle plus tard, hein? Yep. <laughs> In men's sport, rugby is so much further ahead around LGBTQ plus rights than what football is, though it is far from perfect. When I say football, I mean like, you know, using your foot on the ball if you're American watching this. Don't come for me. Some of you are so gonna come for me with that. So rugby is further ahead than football, but that being said, a 2023 study from Monash University in Australia found that, unfortunately, education delivered by professionals didn't make any difference to the use of homophobic language by male athletes in rugby. Sad and disappointing is an understatement. He doesn't know me. I mean, he knows I like rugby. Charlie and... knows him better than his dad, really. That's it. Now sort back to the coach. You can rant about him the whole way there. But his dad is still his dad, and much like I think pretty much everybody on the planet, you don't want to have to lead a double life. Hiding one person that you love from another person that you love, it only perpetuates this guilt and shame at holding on to this dirty little secret and that something is wrong with you. But like so many other aspects of this show, this is the harsh reality for so many queer people. Hi. How are you feeling? Fine. Charlie, you literally fainted on me today. But how are you feeling about seeing your dad? Do you want to come out to him? I know I've been stressed about coming out, but I don't think I realised how stressed out you've been about it. Another game of past the parcel of anxiety at bouncing back and forth, though the emotional literacy that these two have and their, uh, and their communication is utterly incredible. I suppose though this is what people do when they love each other, they try and protect each other and take away their pain when they can. You need the right outlet for that pain and communication is, is, is great for that, but a lot of the communication is actually about Nick's anxiety, not Charlie's. His empathy is on full display, but the reality of any of these anxious thoughts going round and round his head is staying firmly in his head. And this is where we can start to link his incredible empathy, but with those internalized feelings of guilt and perhaps those restrictive eating habits emerging as that outlet, only it's not so secret anymore. I guess just about everything, you're not special, Charlie. And it doesn't matter how I feel about it anyway. It's your coming out. If you're the one who's going Charlie, through it. It doesn't matter how he feels. It matters to me. On the last episode, I mentioned that self-compassion forms of psychotherapy could be really helpful for someone like Charlie. There's also evidence that these compassion-focused forms of psychotherapy can be really helpful for people with internalized homophobia. And I have very little doubt that this could be extrapolated to being beneficial for anybody who's, I suppose, a victim of minority stress, as long as the right cultural competency is there in the way that that therapy is delivered. Compassion-focused therapies essentially use cognitive behavioral therapy techniques to try and understand understand how thought patterns influence emotional states and behaviours, but then adds additional techniques that are designed to try and help you self-soothe and therefore feel happier, more content, safe. Mindfulness is a key component of that. Couldn't have let them off. Pretty sure I did the exact same thing at that age. Sneaking around like that. With a boy. He's fishing. You never did anything like that. He's definitely fishing. <sighs> Go on. Now when you don't figure out your gay until your late twenties, tend to miss out on those beautiful gay teenage experiences. I was also somewhat late. I was I was in my early twenties. 
late by this lot standard on this show, that's for sure. I don't think I've truly felt happy in my own skin around being gay and where I sort of fit into the LGBTQ plus community until I was in my 30s. So there's no time limit on self-discovery. So this show's already shown us beautifully some of the ups and downs of coming out relatively early in your teens or being outed in Charlie's case. And now maybe the effects of living with this secret well into adulthood. I love it and I am very intrigued about how this dynamic will pan out. I'm more intrigued about these two now than any other set of characters or couple on this show. Probably a bit late for me to have any youthful moments of discovery. Now he's fishing. I don't think there's an age limit on those, to be honest. They're flirting. You flirt, mummy. Fishing and flirting. Maybe. Mr. Farouk's tough guy walls are about to come crumbling down and they're gonna hook up, aren't they? I kinda hope they do. Adult queer representation will only make this show better. I love Isaac and his books. I get the impression that buying books and reading books are two completely different hobbies. I wish I appreciated reading as much when I was his age. I was so bogged down in my studies, particularly when I went to university and, and at medical school, that I almost felt guilty at the notion of reading anything that wasn't to do with the curriculum that I was studying. And then when you qualify, you've still got exams all the time. So now I'm 33, I've done all my exams, and somewhat late in life, I've been discovering the joys of reading over the last few months. And stay tuned for the second channel coming very, very soon, all about some of my favorite books and the mental health messages that we can be taken from them. Now that my new backdrop is all pretty much set up. Visibility. Seeing queer couples holding hands in the street, I mean, it makes me so happy, but it makes me feel a bit on edge. Does anybody else get that feeling? I still have this chronic sense of hypervigilance that something bad will happen and doing that will lead to some sort of physical or verbal assault. And I don't think that that's a disproportionate worry given the rise in hate crimes. And unfortunately, I'm filming this just a couple of days after a serious hate crime and a serious violent incident happened outside of a famous London gay venue. I feel happy that some people feel safe and confident enough to do it, but I'm looking around for threats at the same time. What are you doing? I'm just recharging. We could just stay here for a bit. Hmm? In the last video, we started exploring some of the neurobiology behind some of these sparks and these feelings of comfort that we get from physical touch with consent, consensual physical touch. One key neurotransmitter believed to be implicated in this feeling of safety and dare I say at times euphoria is oxytocin produced in the posterior pituitary gland. This may work synergistically, that is the fancy word for in combination with, with our endogenous opioids, our endorphins. The evidence for this has been built primarily through animal studies, but we're now at the point where intranasal administration of oxytocin is in clinical trials for some anxiety disorders and for people with marked and severe patterns of violence and aggression in the context of psychopathy. What do you want? Look, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I know I've said some homophobic stuff in the past. Yes, you did. I feel like I know better now. And I'll never say anything like that again. So, we cool? Can we come in? The smug smile really irritates me. No. Yeah, it's good for you, Charlie. I like seeing empowered and take control Charlie rather than the Charlie that just seems to be absorbing trauma after trauma. Strength comes in many, many forms. That and his empathy are incredible strengths. Me. We're dating. Oh my god. I it. That's really cute. And exhale. How long have you been going out? A few months. Well, we were saying it the other day. I never would have guessed Nick was gay. Yeah. I'm bi, actually, but yeah, so. Do you want us to keep it a secret? We're okay with people knowing.
I love that he asked if he wants them to keep it a secret. That really acknowledges it's not your news, it's not your story, it's not your gossip to fuel. It gives people that sense of safety because get more of an idea that they're on your side. Again, emotional intelligence in this group. I felt relief when he said it. I felt my shoulders come down. And there's the counter transference. My own response to the emotions transferred in this case from Nick to me. This is then a good window into how he may be feeling. If I'm feeling that sense of relief, that probably mirrors what he would be feeling. Emotions can be incredibly diagnostically useful as long as you can sit with them and understand them. Do you think it's gonna get passed around? Like, do you think everyone in school is gonna know about it? Probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably. I think I'm okay with that. Yay! Nervous, but I'll be okay. That's, that's a completely expected emotional reaction to that, I think. Charlie's talked about the idea of control in the last episode, talking about his eating. There was a lot about this idea of control. Coming out is the one thing that you, you can and you should have some control over. Who'd you come out to? When? In what way? How much do you tell them? The problem is, once you start that process, you lose a lot of control because now word spreads. And it will. Humans talk. It would be naive to think otherwise. Which will mean that people that perhaps you didn't want in the room when you came out for the first time will come to learn about it. And I think that's where the nerves and the anxiety comes in. They weren't safe enough to come out to in the room, yet they're going to know. And how are they going to respond? How is this going to affect you in lots of different parts of your life? There'll be people that know about me being gay, who I didn't tell and aren't actually really a part of my life anymore, who perhaps I wouldn't have otherwise wanted to know. Some substantial homophobia that I've witnessed being a key reason to not want to stick around with certain people in my life. But they'll know about me, they'll have their opinion, and I suppose over time I've learned to just be okay with that and shrug my shoulders. And remember that that's the price you pay for not having to hold on to this secret anymore and the relief and the joy that comes with that. Too much? Is this okay? Uh, yeah. That didn't sound very sure. Uh, sorry, um, I, I do like it. it. It's just, um, I'm, I'm not sure I'm ready to do anything more than kissing. So they're talking about being nervous about the idea of sex, but they communicate. And on this show, we've already seen the, uh, the, the, the hugely traumatic response that Charlie has been holding to Ben imposing himself without any form of consent. And now we're seeing this good lesson in how to communicate and the importance of consent. I suppose I'd better head down to reception, try and get some fresh sheets. I mean, you could just share my bed. I mean, Darcy's just come in and been sick no, on his bed sorry. in the scene before this, yes, so. Sir. No. I mean, if it stinks of sick, get new sheets and share his bed. If I'm excited for them, particularly Mr. Farouk. You know, coming out and self-discovery has no age limit, no deadline. We're consistently and constantly learning about ourselves. Their storyline has me more gripped than perhaps any other on this show. Which is likely a reflection of the fact that I'm sitting here as a 33-year-old bloke watching this. Gorgeous and lovely, as always. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. We've got two more episodes to watch from this season. Love you, bye.